This time, all of our phases, including execute chain set, were successful. Consider this. You have a Lambda function with dependencies and you want to deploy it to AWS using code pipeline. Can you do this in a few steps using the AWS console? Let's find out. Let's start by navigating to the code commit service, then click on create repository and give it a name. Hit create, then confirm that you see git clone instructions under step three. Next, let's head to the Cloud9 service, click on create environment and give it a name. I'm going to leave all the other settings to their default values, hit create, then click on open Cloud9 IDE. Let's copy paste the git clone command in our bash terminal, then use the cd or the change directory command to go inside it. Next, I'm going to bring in my lambda underscore function dot py file that starts by importing the requests and the JSON module. Inside my Lambda handler, I'm grabbing the current NYC temperature from this API, then returning it as part of my body string. Let's save this file in the current directory, then bring in our requirements.txt file. Here, I'm specifying the request module since it's an external dependency. Let's save this file in the current directory as well. Next, let's drag and drop our template.yaml file, which specifies a resource called mysamlambda. The resource is of the type AWS serverless function, and under properties, I'm specifying handler, code URI, runtime, and memory size. Under events, I'm specifying API event, which is of the type REST API. Under properties, I'm specifying the path and the method. Let's save this file in the current directory and bring in our buildspec.yaml file. In this file, I have two commands under the build phase. The first one is pip install to install all the dependencies in our requirements.txt file and the second one is AWS CloudFormation package command. Note, I'm specifying three options with my AWS CloudFormation package command. The first one is template file, the second one is output template file, and the third one is S3 bucket, where all the artifacts will get uploaded. I also have the input and output template files under the artifact section. Let's save our buildspec.yaml file in the current directory, then run the git add command to add all of our files in the commit index. Next, run the git commit command with the hyphen m option to specify our commit message. Finally, I'm going to run the git push command to push all of our changes to the master branch. Looks like everything worked as expected, Let's confirm this by going back to the code commit tab, then go inside our repository. Now that our code commit repository is all set, let's head to the code build service, then click on create build project. Give your project a name, choose the repository that we just created, then pick the master branch. Under environment, I'm going to select the Amazon Linux operating system with a standard runtime and a standard image. Since our buildspec.yml file already uses the default name, we don't have to specify it here. Under artifacts, I'm going to choose Amazon S3, then pick my test bucket. For artifacts packaging, I'm going to select zip, then leave all the other settings to their default values and hit create build project. Click on start build, then scroll down to the build log section and confirm that our commands in the build phase worked as expected. Now that our code build project is all set, let's head to the code pipeline service, 
then click on Create Pipeline. Give your pipeline a name, then select Custom Location under Artifact Store. Here, I'm going to select the same S3 test bucket that we have been using in the earlier steps, then click on Next. Choose AWS Code Commit as the source provider, then select the repository that we just created with master branch. For change detection, I'm going to select Amazon CloudWatch events, then click on next. Select AWS code build as the build provider, then choose the build project that we just created, then click on next. Choose AWS CloudFormation as the deploy provider, then select create or replace a chain set. Give your stack a name, then provide a name for your chain set. Under template, I'm going to choose build artifact with the name of my output template file. Choose capability underscore IAM from the capabilities dropdown, and then let's head to the IAM service so we can create a service role. Go inside roles, click on create role, then choose cloud formation from the use case dropdown. Hit next. Here, I'm going to give my role fairly broad permissions so we avoid running into permission issues. Let's give our role full access to Lambda, S3, API Gateway, and CloudWatch logs. Hit next, give your role a name, then click on create role. Let's copy the ARN of our role, then paste it under role name in the code pipeline tab. Click on next, then hit create pipeline. Looks like our source step passed, but our build step failed. Click on view logs so we can get to the root cause. It seems like the service role attached to our build project does not have permissions to access the S3 bucket. To fix this, let's find the IAM role attached to our code build project then click on Attach Policies from the Add Permissions dropdown. I'm going to give this role full access to S3, then click on Add Permissions. Head back to the Code Pipeline tab, then click on Retry in the Build section. This time, the build step was successful. Next, let's scroll down to the Deploy phase and see how that goes. Looks like our deploy step was unable to create a chain set. Let's get to the root cause by clicking on view in CloudFormation. Go inside the test stack, then navigate to the chain sets tab. Click on the chain set, then look at the status reason. Looks like our CloudFormation role does not have access to create a chain set. To fix this, I'm going to attach the CloudFormation full access policy to this role. Next, let's head back to the Code Pipeline tab and click on Retry in the Deploy phase. This time, our chain set was successfully created. If you go inside your chain set in CloudFormation, you should be able to see all your changes. Next, I'm going to delete this chain set and the stack then head back to the Code Pipeline tab and click on Edit. Hit Edit Stage in the Deploy section, then click on Add Action Group. Select AWS CloudFormation from the Action Provider dropdown, then choose Execute a Chain Set from the Action Mode dropdown. Give this action a name, select Build Artifact, then enter your stack name and the chain set name. Hit Done, then click on Save. Next, let's trigger this pipeline automatically by adding a change to our lambda underscore function dot py file. Let's head back to the Cloud9 tab, add a comment to our lambda function, then commit and push this change. As expected, our code pipeline was automatically triggered. Let's give it a few minutes for all the code pipeline phases to complete. Looks like our execute chain set action failed. To get to the root cause, click on view in CloudFormation. 
Navigate to the events tab, then look at the status reason right next to create failed. Looks like our cloud formation role does not have enough IAM permissions. I'm going to give this role full IAM access and try again. To reinitiate my code pipeline, I'm going to add another change to my Lambda function, then push it to the code commit repository. Give it a few minutes for our code pipeline to run through all our phases. This time, all of our phases, including execute chain set, were successful. Let's confirm this by going back to the cloud formation service. Head to the resources tab, then click on my sam lambda to confirm that your lambda function looks as expected. Next, let's click on the rest API, then select the get resource. Click on test then confirm that you see current NYC temperature in the response body. There you have it. But before you go, here's a question for you. Why do AWS code pipeline engineers make great comedians?